Hi, and welcome to today's lesson, Problem Solving Ratios. Let's say that you order a package of school supplies. When the box arrives, it says that there are 16 pieces. When you open up the box, you notice that there is one complete package of a folder and three pencils, and then several other folders and pencils are not packaged in the bottom of the box. So how many pencils are in the box? How many folders? When we're solving a problem like this, we can first ask ourselves, what do we know? We know that when we have one full set, it is one folder and three pencils, and we know we have 16 pieces total. A strategy that we can use to help us with this is the draw picture strategy. I would first use a circle with the letter inside of it that represents each of the things in my ratio. So because I'm comparing folders and pencils, I'll draw a circle with the letter F to represent my one folder, and then I'll draw three circles, each with the letter P, to represent my three pencils. This is what was in one set. In order to complete this problem, I'll ask myself, how many total pieces will I need to draw to reach 16? I've already drawn four of the pieces. So what I can simply do is say, if I know inside of a set it's four and I will be drawing rows of four over and over, four times what will give me 16? In other words, how many sets will it take to get to 16? I know that four times four is 16, so it'll take me four total sets. The draw picture strategy is great when you do not have a lot of items in your total. I can visually see here how many pencils I have versus how many folders I have. So if I box around the circles with the letter P, I see I have 12 pencils, and I box around the circles with the letter F, I can see I have four folders. So there are 12 pencils and four folders. This probably looks familiar because we looked at something very similar to this in our equivalence ratio lessons. We have folders to pencils. In our original set, we had one to three. In our total set here, we have four to 12. I can simplify the fraction four twelfths and end up with one third. So I know that these are equivalent. When I add a cross on my set here, I have four. When I add a cross on my set here, I have 16. Let's look at a different strategy. This is the ratio table strategy. Our new problem says that James has a vase with three roses for every two daisies. If there are a total of 25 flowers, how many are roses? How many are daisies? What we're gonna do is start by drawing out a table that has three columns. The first column is for roses, the second is for daisies, so the two parts of your ratio should be your first two columns, and your last should be something we're gonna call all. And we'll see how to use this in just a moment. Across the bottom of our table, we're going to write out ratio, because what we're including here is the ratio of roses to daisies. And at the bottom, what we wanna know is the ratio of roses to daisies for the entire set. Let's fill in our table. If we have three roses and two daisies, we can actually add these together to find how many are in one set, just like with the pack of one, pencil, one folder and three pencils in the last problem. So I can see here that I have five flowers in a set. I have 25 flowers total, so this is going to go in my to or total and all of these inside my table. So then all I need to do is simply ask myself, how do I multiply to get from five sets to a total of 25? So I'm sorry, I have a total of five to a total of 25. Well, I would multiply by five. And fractions and ratios are very similar in that what you do to one, you do to the other. So if I know I can get from five to 25 by multiplying by five, I'll do that to the daisies to end up with 10 and the roses to end up with 15. So how many are roses are 15 and our daisies are 10. Let's recap. We learn two different strategies for solving ratios, drawing a picture and ratio tables. We know that ratio tables are most beneficial when we have large numbers because there's less items to draw. That's it for our lesson today. Thanks for watching.
Don't forget to click the red subscribe button at the bottom so you never miss a lesson. Tune in next time.